everyone. Welcome to another episode of Zootopica, the podcast where everything zoology from research to day-to-day life to pop culture, everything meets. I'm Richard Somavira, I'm a zoologist and I'll be your host. Now, this is a continuation of our last episode which is um, on questions kids have about the animal world. And I'm again joined by my co-host Rehan. Welcome. So Rehan and I know each other for 9 years because I'm your my dad. Yes, remember that. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so um Rehan tell uh, tell everyone how we do this. So there are kids questions all around the whole globe. Yeah. And we have a few of them uh that we are going to answer today. Yeah, so they have sent us the questions. We answered about uh, 10 of them last time and we are going to do the rest. We we had we had too many questions, so we had to pick few things, few questions to represent all the different parts of zoology um to cover. So if your question has not been answered in this one, check the previous episode. Even if not, something similar would have been included. With that, shall we make a start? Hit me. Yep. Yeah, with the words. Oh, um are there who and where? Oh yeah. Mia from Perth. Are there animals with only one eye like a cyclops, but there is an animal called a cyclops? Actually, yes. There are there are my quite small animals um in a group called copepods. Now, these are like your shrimps these are like your crustaceans right teeny weeny ones they have what's called a median eye so they have this one light sensitive spot in the middle of the um head they are actually called cyclops that group um and we believe that that median eye is sensitive to light so it tells the animal where dark where is light so they can move between dark and light um so yeah there are animals that with one eye and you know what in the animal world there are animals with Three eyes. three eyes who are they there is are you being a cyclops yep yeah there is a lizard called the it lives in new mm-hmm. zealand yeah which one it is tuatara yeah tuatara. so not only tuatara quite a few lizards actually have what's called a parental light so when they are born they have a light sensitive spot on the middle of the head on the fore, uh, on the top of the head and in tuatara that is actually connected to nerves right so but it's only visible in the teeny weeny ones like the the babies Baby. so the babies have the two eyes on the sides and then they have like a third eye on top but in the adults you don't see that um yeah so animal world is amazing you have one eyed ones pretty much everything living has two eyes other and then few have three there are animals with multiple other eyes too what's next next is from Everly Nice in Auckland. Auckland. Auckland is in New Zealand. Auckland. Yeah. So do mummy spiders eat daddy spiders? Uh, yes. Some do. So people believe that all or oh, most uh spiders after mating the the mummy, the female actually eats the male. It's actually not very common. Only some groups do that and even within those groups they don't do it all the time right so for example the the black widow spiders the name comes from that what's a widow a widow is a female without a man yeah so like a hus- the wife without a husband right so that name comes from that thinking people thought that look they they kill their husbands or their males so they named it that your red back spiders so few groups um do that behavior but it's not very common so yes some mummy spiders eat daddy spiders but not all and we actually don't know why there are few explanations one of the common ones being that the the daddy it's nutritious so the mummy after mating it she has to bring up the eggs and she gets some last snack from the daddy <laughs> done yeah daddy feeding the babies did you eat it okay what's next I don't have my pen anymore but um what came first the chicken or the egg? Oh, who asked that? Uh Lucas from Earth. 
again. Yeah, so if, if they haven't mentioned where they're from, let's say it. So what came, the chicken or the egg? We actually have an answer for this. It's the egg. All right, you know why? The egg was laid by something that's not a chicken. So that's how evolution happens. So something that's not what we call a chicken laid that egg. And for mutation, for hybridization, for many reasons, something that we call a chicken came out of that. All right? And that happens all the time in the, uh, in the living world. Things give rise to different things. So in, in the name of chicken, the egg came first. So what's next? Uh, Mason from Earth again. Mm -hmm. Why is my bunny rabbit e eat her own poo? Eat her own poo. Yeah, so rabbits do actually eat their own poo. Imagine that. But it's not all the poo they eat. So rabbits have two different types of uh, poos. They have the, the hard ones and then they have like something which is softer. So they only eat the soft bits. So what happens is that they take the most out of what they have eaten. So they digest it again, all right, by eating it again and absorb more fibers to minerals to vitamins, everything out of uh, the food. So you, if you're having bunnies and if you see them eating their own poo, don't stop that. They actually need that. Yeah, so poo eating rabbits is true. Okay, what's next? This one's from Isabella in France. Is it sad that people hunt rhinoceroses for their horns? Some rhinos types have already gone extinct. What medicine is made for of their horns and why can't scientists make that in the lab that's a long question so so basically there's few things to that question okay rhinoceros are being hunted to extinction because of their horns why do they hunt them and can we make rhinoceros horn artificially so yes there are five different types of rhinos in the world three in asia and the other two in africa what are the african ones the white rhino and the black rhino. Yeah, so it's mostly the African species that have been hunted, right, for the horn industry. Um, and mainly it's for medicinal purposes, right? And and as a as a as also thinking that they have superpowers like power generating. Mm. Um, th there's also an industry where it's used as ivory, right? So for carving. Uh, for like for ornamental purposes but mostly for medicinal purposes now so the sad part is that there's no actual truth to any of that because rhino horns are mostly made out of um, keratin do you know what else is made out of keratin nails nails and i was trying to do this but i don't have any hair hair so so basically it's a it's a bunch of hair and nails right with with some calcium and melanin in it that you are grinding and eating. Now, the rhinoceros horn is basically a very thick set of hair wrapped, right? So what people have done, with what scientists have done is to recreate that using the, the closest living relative of rhinoceros, which is the horse, right? So they have taken the tail, the tail um, hair from horses and using special glues, they have put it together and testing has shown that you can't actually detect the difference in chemically or even the appearance, everything. So there is, that has been done, but then there are ethical reasons why not to make that common. So pe because we want to stop the industry, not to put an alternative, right? But it's very hard to stop something that has been happening for hundreds and hundreds of years. So unfortunately, although there has been Plenty of science showing there's nothing good about that. There's nothing medicinally valuable that. And then we already have alternatives. Stopping that threat is a huge, huge task. Well, some uh, African resort things, uh, they keep rhinos safe. Yeah, they do. So now there's a lot of um, ranger groups and there are private reserves that protect rhinos, which is great. Right, but then again, still poaching is a huge threat. Okay, the next one is from Eta from Earth again. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of an immortal jellyfish? How can they live forever? 
Yeah, right. So, okay. So, fascinating question. Immortal jellyfish, people believe, is a jellyfish that never ends, never dies and ends, right? But there's no animal that lives forever. Now, immortal jellyfish, and there are a few other types of jellyfish, they have this absolutely strange life cycle. So normally what happens in a life cycle, you're born and you become something adult and then you breed and then... You get rotten. Yeah, you die and get rotten, right? Now, immortal jellyfish and the, the other types of jellyfish I talk about, they have this very strange thing. They grow, they, uh, jellyfish have this larvae thing that settles and makes a medusa. Medusa is like a um, sea anemone. It's like a jellyfish upside down, right? And from the medusa comes the baby jellyfish. And these jellyfish then becomes the adults. Now, what's strange about these guys is that when the adult jellyfish is about to die, it can change it's itself and becomes like a medusa form again and give rise to more babies. So that is a clone. The babies are a clone of what the daddy was or mommy was. So it's called biological immortality. Immortality. It's not that it lives forever. It's like a, um, what's the mythical uh, thing? A phoenix. Uh, where did we see a phoenix? Recently? Harry Potter. Yeah, Harry Potter. Which episode the is that? The Chambers of Secrets. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, see, the, the phoenix die and from the ashes comes a baby. So it's like that in the immortal jellyfish. So it's not that it never dies. It, when it's about to die, it change and go back in the life stages and come back again. So it's, it's a continuous thing. So that's how fascinating... The living world is awesome. The next one is from James Barty, Perth. Why is a baby swan a signet and not a swanling? It's confusing. It's actually confusing. Um, James, we totally agree with you. I mean, you have, what's a baby duck? Duckling. What's gooseling. A gooseling. And, and, um, uh, and you have signet. signet. What happened to you? So the thing is that swanling is still used. I have actually seen swanling in, in even books, right? So it's a word that's used, but I'm not sure where the signet came from, but that's one of those weird things people come up with. I mean, yeah, we, we, we have strange names for baby animals sometimes, right? What's a baby echidna? Echidna puggle. A puggle, right? What's the baby rabbit? A baby rabbit. Kitten. Kitten, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. For a second. There you go. Yeah. So, um, and also yeah, I actually forgot that too. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, the, yeah, so it's one of those strange things. So, a lot of big animals, we call them calves, like the cows, the calves. whales, the um, your elephants, they all have calves. Then, um, big cats have cubs, but the little ones have kittens. So, it's one of those things. People just make up m nice names. But, in a language point of view, I, I'm not sure about the history. However, the word swanling is used, which, but still very uncommon. Uh, baby, but yeah, it is confusing. Baby fishes are called fries. Yeah, yeah, baby fish is called fries. And seahorses. Yeah. This one from Wayne Benu in Indonesia. I feel sad when I go to the zoo. Those animals are trapped in cages. We should open the zoo so where the animals walk free. Look, we should have open zoos, not we should open the zoos. Um, so, what's the name? Vyan. So, Vyan, yes. So, unfortunately, uh, you're coming from Indonesia. So, parts of Asia, which I also grew up and I still work, there are quite a lot of still old zoos where it's the traditional way of keeping an animal in a cage. A small really? box. Yeah, small cages, like metal cages, and they don't have any habitat things. They don't have anything to keep them going, right? But, and believe me, the zoos have come a long way. There are still, unfortunately, some zoos that... that are bad. Bad as in, the, it's not the best for the animal. This is right? the cage and this is the animal. Yeah. It's like... But most zoos now, especially in, in developed countries, and more and so, more and more in uh, developing countries too... Are going for a not open 
not open zoos, but their enclosures or the cages are much better. Animals have things to do. They keep them occupied. They change features, right? They get fed well. So things are improving and zoos do play, a, do, zoos do play an important role. Now, as a kid, I used to go to the zoo, right? And that's where I saw my first ever like giraffes and stuff. There's no other way. Like I grew up in Sri Lanka. We don't have them. So it teaches information about them. It teaches you stuff. Exactly. Plus, like you get to see animals that you'll never see in the wild. Like right? the that, tongues. Yeah. That's how you got. That's how we get enthusiastic. That's how kids get enthusiastic about learning about the animal world. I mean, I did that as a kid and I take you guys to the zoo all the time. So when you, you see animals that you will never or you still have not seen in the wild, right? So, and also zoos, so one thing is the education part and getting people enthusiastic and the other part is conservation programs. So a lot of big zoos in the world run conservation programs in other parts of the world. Like to in, breed the uh, almost extinct ones? Yeah, so that's another one. So apart from the conservation programs in the forest, they also do what's called captive breeding. Oh, right? yeah. So you bring the animals to the zoo, they breed them and they release them. So like the Perth Zoo has a program called the uh, Western Swamp Turtle and they have a few other things for mammals. So like that, a lot of there has been animals that are literally being saved from extinction because zoos captive bred them. So when I'm sure you once you get to know and go to some better zoos, your opinion will change. But I agree. I mean, there are some animals suffering in zoos around the world because they're not still up to that standard, which is unfortunate. However, with time, a lot of things will improve. The last one is from the best planet. It's from Harper from Earth. Why is it the best planet? Because it's the only planet that has life on it. That we know of. That we know of. Good one. Yeah? Okay. Um, cheetah, falcon or tuna? Who's, Who's cheetah? The... <laughs> <laughs> Who's that's cheetah? Is that a female cheetah? Maybe. Um, cheetah or falcon or tuna? Who's the fastest animal? <sighs> Oh, we already had a question about the slowest in the previous one, remember? Yeah, so fastest? This, this is the fastest. I think it is the peregrine falcon. So it Dying. depends on how you move, right? You can't... So the thing is, again, I told you about lists. The animal world doesn't like lists. It's very hard to list things. Cheetahs run, falcons... Move. What do they do? Fly D and dive. tuna. Yeah, tunas That's swim, right? So it's very hard to compare something that run, which have a lot of resistance, to something that swim in water, a bit less resistant, to something that flies in the sky, even less resistance. So within their habitat, with the land, cheetahs are the fastest. They have gone over like 100 uh, kilometers an hour. But that's only on land. Only, and, and for a very short time. So they can't sustain One minute, that. basically. Is it? Yeah, yes, so like, so, so the, the, the animals that they hunt can run for longer. Uh, peregrine falcons can reach when they dive, when they do those dives, they can reach up to like over 300 kilometers an hour. 365. Is it? Right. And it's not tuna, but in the animal world, the marlins and the sailfish are faster Black than tuna. Marlins. Yeah, so they, they actually hunt these guys. So they, they have to be even faster. Right, so so they they reach enormous speeds too. So it, again, it's very hard to pinpoint what is the fastest. But little on fact, if you consider the fastest to body length, right? Meaning how fast the animal goes depending on the size, right? Some of the uh, the some of the small ones, the South, South the Californian size. mite, right, can go about. 322 times its body length within a second which is crazy which is like a cheetah can't do that a marlin can't do that a peregrine falcon can't do that so mites when they jump from one place to the other right within few seconds they go an enormous distance for the size for the size like so like a meter and yeah yeah like, like this i mean that, if you consider that that's like a human running over 2000 kilometers one right second. in in a no in an hour you we can't right no one not even a vehicle can't go that far so so that 
that's if you consider that speed the mites are way faster but that's for body level whereas cheetahs peregrine falcons and billfish are the fastest on land oh yeah by the way pinocchio is a pinocchio is a billfish when he lies oh yeah yeah he he grows a bill no. and swims yeah well with that ray i think we have covered all the questions uh, kids have sent and um, thank you for co-hosting this beautiful episode with me we'll meet you again in the next episode um until then keep exploring keep inspi getting inspired and discover the animal world the living world is amazing there's aliens yep there are a few run see you next episode thank you